uh, what is happening so today i want to show you a video that will be really useful if you are into devops and you are looking at managing your splunk environment through ansible right uh, so this um, video what i want to show you is how you can automate your app installs all right the whole uh, the thing the video that i'm showing you is actually part of um, the splunk for ansible project which i've been very well maintained so i'm just showing you the part of one part of the uh, whole project that you can use if you are not like fully into ansible yet and you just want to start looking at uh, automating your app installs right uh, so this is what we are this is the mechanism that actually uh, goes behind the video right uh, so splunk enterprise that is on prem have a specific uh, api call called services app local right so the thing that this uh, api call does is it actually manages all your app install uninstall uh, editing and all those things right the thing here is it is not actually very well documented right so if you actually read this it is not uh, very clear on how the whole thing is supposed to work uh, and it is not documented how you can actually use the same api call on installing as from splunk base right uh, so i wanted to show you how we can quickly install apps from splunk base straight into uh, your splunk instance without uh, doing it through the gui or downloading app onto your local machine and then uploading it and things like that right uh, right so right now i have a all-in-one instance uh, so this is uh, blank right now right so let me quickly uh, log into my all-in-one instance right uh, so th the video that i'm showing you this is for a standalone you can do it for a cluster if your search it is a standalone um, you can d try different variants if you have a sh cluster i can make another video on how to do the same thing on a sh cluster but then that is done through the deployer so we are doing it on an all-in-one you can do it on a cluster if your search is a standalone right uh, so first what i want to show you is how you can do it without ansible right uh, so what i want to show you is i have an app all right this is a splunk base app uh, rfc 54246log right uh, so i want it installed on this search all right so uh, first thing what i have to do is i want to find out the version history right the version number of this add-on right once i get that i need to find out what uh, this number on the url 978 right so once i have both this version history and this this one right i ha i have to log into the um, command line right and then i have to run this uh, curl command uh, basically all it is telling you is uh, curl do a post uh, hyphen u admin and the password right and we are calling the the splunk rest api right uh, and then what i want to do is i'm going to put in the um, splunk base um, api token right uh, so this is the splunk base api token so you have to generate your own api token using your username and password right uh, so this is uh, extensively documented on this page uh, manage splunk apps downloads with splunk base entitlement api right uh, so this is the uh, command for getting it right if you run this command you can get the api token like this so you get the api token you can just copy paste that same api token to the command line right so this is the command like this we are calling the local server because we are we are on the local server right auth uh, and then what we are going to do is uh, we have to paste it like this right uh, so i'll just explain what is happening uh, hyphen d file name is equal to true right again hyphen d name so you paste your you are you just 
type your URL right like this sprungways.splunk.com app slash app slash 978 is your app number right so this is different for each app right so uh, what I'm saying is if you go to a different app let's say we go to a Cisco app so that app number is different right so this 978 it is different so I change this one to match 978 and then I put in like uh, 1.1 1 .1. so 1 1.1 I got from here so if I go to version history it is telling which version I should install right 978 app number version 1.1 right uh, release version 1.1 download right so when I press the enter key right so that that is it so I get a return back saying that uh, add-on has been installed right so it is as easy as that right so if I do a uh, uh, ls on the uh, off splunk etc apps all right uh, I have the add-on here uh, so this is not some funny file of older that got downloaded it is a full app full add-on all right uh, if you notice it you will notice that this thing was really fast right uh, so it didn't there's no delay here the whole add-on just got downloaded right so this is how you do it if you're just doing it for one app right uh, so i want to show you how we ha we can do this with uh, ansible all right so if there's only one app we can just paste it in but then the purpose of this whole video is um, like to if you're moving away from managing your Splunk instance uh, manually you can actually look at Ansible to get a lot of automation in place right uh, so it is much safer to do it uh, through automation because it's a repeatable code you have full uh, documentation you can obviously you can run this thing through your um, devops yeah, through your pipeline right you can uh, make you can just uh, keep track of all your changes and things like that so th so this is uh, mostly for uh, people who are interested in automation right right uh, so the same thing uh, how we do it with uh, ansible is so let me show you uh, the few files, uh, the first file that I created, uh, right. Uh, so I have a list, I created a list, right. Uh, so this, so first you have to create a list, right. Uh, so let me just zoom in. I create a list, a simple uh, CSV file and then app and version. So I just created like this. So this is the app number and this is the version number app number and version number so app number is nothing but that um, the Splunk uh, app that you want installed right app number and version number version number this app so just to be very clear this is what I mean by app and version right app number and version number so I created a list so this is like one two three four five six seven seven apps that I want installed on my all-in-one right so I uh, created this list.csv right and then I wrote um, um, Ansible uh, playbook right um, so let me show you the Ansible playbook that I'm going to run right so this one is uh, let me quickly pull it out for you So this is the Ansible playbook that I have written, uh, right? So, see, some people do ask me to host this thing on uh, GitHub, uh, but the thing here is, when Splunk versions change, I have to spend time to fix the uh, Ansible playbook, right? Um, so, I do get a bit busy with uh, my uh, job which is professional services so I don't have time to uh, maintain my code that's why I don't host it online so this is just to give you a brief idea of how this thing is supposed to work right you you can just google the whole thing and you can do it yourself because if you just put in some time learning Ansible you, this is quite uh, simple to understand I'll just explain how this thing is supposed to work right um, so this is your uh, Ansible playbook right uh, so this is the 
server IP, right? So I'll just explain what is happening. Uh, so I'm running it through my local host, right? Uh, so the first task I'm doing is I'm asking Ansible to read the CSV file that I created. This CSV file I'm asking Ansible to read, right? Uh, so this CSV file is being read by Ansible right so i type like this list csv and then i'm saying the delimiter is comma right this is the delimiter here, comma right and then uh, i'm registering the file uh, so register you say just read up if you have a doubt just read up what is uh, the read csv for um, ansible it's uh, very well documented what this thing is all about right and then i'm starting a new uh, task right uh, so the app installer so i'm using the uri uh, so this is a built-in feature for ansible and then you can say you can type all those things or all you have to do is there's a really nice website called uh, curl to ansible ansible uri converter right uh, so this what this website does is the same command that uh, I ran earlier, right? Uh, this single line command that I ran earlier. So let me just quickly pull the single line command, right? So if what happens is if I paste this single line command onto this website, right? They are going to actually show you uh, what it looks like on Ansible, right? So I I didn't type this, right? I didn't type this whole thing out. I didn't type this play. I just copy pasted it, right? Name. So this is something. Uh, this is the only thing that I, I changed. URI, URI, URL, URL method post. So this is actually just a copy paste. Uh, all you have to know is running this command, right? Uh, this is a simple uh, curl command. You just paste it on the Ansible website and uh, cut curl converter, and it will actually give you the exact uh, code that you have to do right and then the last thing is here you have to um, pull this variable so this is a um, we are loading the variables from from this file right we are loading the variables from here loop we are loading it here and then I have to do a loop control uh, for this uh, for this file right um, just read up on ansible's uh, read csv read underscore csv what this is all about so this is basically uh, to make sure that this all these variables get used right uh, all these ways will get used on when i run the playbook right uh, so here's what happens when i run the playbook right uh, ansible hyphen playbook hyphen i host and then uh, I think it's called trial. Yeah, trial. Trial dot yaml. So it should run. So let's see what happens. Yeah. So app installation is happening. All right. So this okay. This message that we are getting back is simply saying that app installs are happening on the back end. Right. So once this uh, app install complete, I'll just explain what just happened, right? So all three, six, and seven app got installed on your Splunk enterprise, right? So what basically happened is it pulled the variables from the user list, right? It loaded the variables here, right? Uh, so this is a Jinja style uh, uh, that we use in Ansible. So basically what it did is it pulled the variables from there to here and ran the code all right so this seven apps got installed and now uh, if i go here all the seven apps got installed one two three four five uh some uh, the other two apps are also there all right uh, yeah six and then seven all right all the seven apps got installed all right uh, if you have to do it through the ui it would have taken longer right but uh, then this process is actually not to save time it is actually to automate your uh, splunk environment 
right um yeah so there's a ton of um ap calls that are listed here right so it, it will actually make your life a lot of lot easier uh, if you actually go through this like you can manage your cluster you can do a lot of administrative tasks through the rest api calls the only thing is it's not very well documented you have to do a bit of fiddling around to get this thing to work but then once this code is working right so what i would know uh, do is i can i have a code that is easily uh, repeatable like i can have a new entirely new search it's spun up with all the apps loaded right uh, i don't have to um, go in and then keep installing the same set of apps over and over again because i can just uh, run the same playbook once load up all the apps and then i have my search set running right uh, so this is what i did i did the terraform build right to get the server up and then i ran a, a ansible simple ansible playbook to uh, spin up splunk and then i i ran this url to get all the i mean i ran this playbook to get all the apps installed all right you can just uh, read up on how that thing works uh, and then just uh, keep in mind this website which actually helped me write the playbook right you just put in your curl command and it will show you this one right there's a bit of um, trickery that i have to use to load up the variable file and get it to read but then this is how it is done all right read csv you tell the read csv and then you type in like this and that's it you have your um, website loaded with all your apps like now the same thing right uh, so if i do a cat uh list dot csv so i can have a hundred apps here right and all hundred will get installed in like a few minutes so this is very very similar to how acs works on small cloud right uh, acs also works in a similar mechanism uh, right so it's something that we can do with uh, ansible on prem right uh, so that is it for this video um i can try making a same video for um sh cluster right uh, so we can load up the same set of apps on the deployer and instead of uh, pushing it through the deployer manually we can just run it from uh, ansible all right we can there's a lot of potential for ansible in your environment so yeah so just uh, leave a comment on this video and tell me what you think about it and uh, yeah so until next time thanks guys